Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June online Rancher SUSE meetup. Uh, today, we are pleased to be able to share with you a uh, exciting topic on a technology called Harvester. Uh, and we're going to talk today about provisioning bare metal nodes with Harvester and Tinkerbell. So I think we are at the top of the hour here, and people are, are streaming in quickly. Um, uh, why don't we go over some housekeeping items as people uh, roll in? and uh, then we'll kind of start to kick off the, the fun of today's event. So a little who's who here. Um, I'm your host today, William Jimenez, Technical Product Manager at SUSE, and I'm joined by two esteemed colleagues and, uh, and uh, engineers in, that are working heavily on this technology, uh, Gaurav Mehta from our uh, APAC region, um, and Shang Yang, um, from uh, the U.S. side, and he is the uh, SUSE engineering manager for Harvester specifically. And um, we're going to uh, talk about a couple things, a couple ground rules, so that we have the right frame of mind for this event. Because this is not a uh, this is not a typical webinar. We we like to keep the atmosphere, you know, more engaging and um, really try to make it feel like this is a community event that we are all in person at. Now I know. These days, of course, in-person events are kind of a novelty anyways now, and we've forgotten what that's like. But just imagine if we were all in a, a meetup uh, at some venue or some uh, local, you know, uh, local technology <laughs> location, uh, you, you should be able to ask questions and um, uh, jump in with conversation. So we want that same sort of thing here, where it's not just listening and, and, and slideware. So we're going to show you some information but we always want you to be able to ask questions and direct the topic and direct the uh, flow of the conversation towards what's relevant to you. So please speak up. Uh, there's a question box on the right-hand side um, of your GoToWebinar screen where you can ask those questions. And again, that really helps um, break things up and make this more exciting and engaging. Um, so yeah, please don't let us just be talking the whole time. No one wants to do that, right? We also want to just reiterate our Slack network. I'm sure all of you know about it. Um, so it kind of goes without saying, but um, Slack is a great place for finding out more about our technology and asking questions and kind of diving into the technology with us. Um, you can get help. You can ask for uh, technical advice on something with a rancher technology or just meet other like-minded uh, individuals in the CNCF community. So check out slack.rancher.io. And also a little plug for something new at SUSE, um, the SUSE Rancher community. This is a new um, uh, online portal for engaging with you, the community, with our open source friends and family. And uh, there's a wealth of, of knowledge and, and uh, information about what we're working on and um, ways to learn, ways to get educational content uh, related to open source technologies in cloud native. So highly recommend you check that out as that check that out as well. That is again a complement to our Slack and just makes that even more richer now. And let's talk a little bit about the agenda because you obviously came here to learn something and uh, hear more about something we're working on. So let's get right to that. So the agenda will be as follows: We're going to do a quick intro on Harvester. Um, uh, and an update on kind of where the technology is at and what we're what we're uh, what, our, what our vision is for that. We're going to jump into a demo. The demo is going to be the bulk of what we're doing today. We're, we're going to keep this really hands on, and it's going to be about um, a, quite a lot of stuff. We're going to show you just the harvester technology itself, why HCI is so powerful and and and, and important, and also how you can uh, really transform your data center into a uh, infrastructure as code uh, API driven world with uh, imaging technologies, uh, bare metal imaging technology. You'll see some really cool stuff um, as well in that. And then finally, we'll do a QA and a at the end. So uh, keep your questions flowing. We, we will get to them. Uh, we, we see all of them. So feel free to ask at any time, and we'll uh, have plenty of time at the end to make sure they're all answered. So with that, um, let's talk a little bit about Harvester's technology and uh, kind of the topic du jour today. So um, uh, Harvester is is a technology that is is designed to uh, create a new way of looking at what HCI um, is and how it functions and how we use it. So um, 
to start with, I, you know, I want to show you this visual of what we think HCI is today. This is the status quo of, of HCI as it stands today. And the idea is that uh, with HCI, you can take networking and storage and virtualization, and then you can express all of them, all of these concerns, uh, through a single proprietary API. So now you can manage all of these aspects of your data center through a single API. And then as an IT admin, I use that API to converge applications into that infrastructure. And this gives me a very uh, easy to use way to uh, method for managing the data center, maybe even more like the cloud. It gives me more of a cloud-like experience in the data center. And this is the way HCI has been um, for some time now. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's 10 to 15 years old. And in the last, you know, 10 years at least, it, it hasn't really changed much. It's really been the same sort of model. And so what we were asking ourselves is, what is the future of HCI going to look like? Um, is there any room for innovation? And what, what we think uh, at, at Rancher Labs is that um, there's an opportunity here to change uh, how we, uh, the language by which we manage these concerns of the data center. And really, this proprietary API should be replaced with an open API. An open API would actually serve, suit this use case uh, much better because this is a language that then is truly portable across all types of HCI and all types of infrastructure. And so we think the future of HCI, which we'd like to call HCI 2.0, is just that. It is replacing proprietary um, methods for uh, virtualizing and converging infrastructure with open standards, uh, aka Kubernetes, the language of the data center. And it also means, too, that we get containers as well as part of that, because containers now uh, are, are a new part of our application model. So we need a way to uh, also have that be in the HCI context. So the rest of this doesn't change. We still converge our applications into infrastructure. Um, but now we're using an open API to achieve that. And we also are able to harness containers as part of that process. And this really becomes powerful when we look at it from uh, as we take a step back and look at this from the broader perspective, because now, as you can see, we have a way uh, to manage and to deploy applications across all these infrastructure types that's common. So we've leveled the playing field now and created a, uh, a unified way to approach application management, whether we're in the edge, the data center, or the cloud. So we think this is really transformative when you look at it in context across your organization's uh, application needs, the ability now to deploy applications with a consistent language with Kubernetes is far more powerful. It just makes HCI that much more powerful. And so um, Project Harvester is an open source technology that um, is, is how we are trying to demonstrate this vision of uh, HCI 2.0. And it's made up of several uh, open source technologies that you've probably heard of, like Kubernetes and KVM and uh, Longhorn, to name a few. And we've combined all these technologies to be a fully featured, out of the box, um, virtualization, uh, storage, and networking platform. And it works on bare metal. And the, the point of all of this is, is to increase IT value. So Harvester, when we combine all these technologies together, we get uh, greater value because now we can unify all of our hardware types, whether we have hardware at the edge, in the campus data center, in the central um, production data center, we can now unify all those different hardware types with the same uh, HCI layer on top. And now our applications, we can also deploy in the same way, whether in the data center, cloud, and the edge, using the same tools. So consistent tooling for our developers and our CI/CD pipelines and our monitoring and our um, our, our packaging and, and dependency management is now a real possibility because of this. And finally, if we are going to use containers with our HCI um, in our, in, or alongside our virtual machines, why not use uh, the best in class support from uh, for Kubernetes from Rancher? And so you'll see as well that with, with Harvester, we're able to integrate deeply into Rancher, the Rancher container management platform can integrate deeply into Harvester to provide a unified uh, pane of glass for both virtual machines and containers, as well as um, providing turnkey 
pathways to get Kubernetes up and running on your HCI. So we can take that bare metal um, in your data center and with Rancher integrated uh, and, and working with Harvester, we can, uh, we can orchestrate Kubernetes faster than you could before. And so some of the features here are listed and these are really table stakes, I think, as far as HCI. Um, so I don't probably even need to enumerate them. You can, you can, you can see for yourself that they're pretty, um, these, are, these are the core features that you'd expect out of an HCI platform. And let's talk a little bit about architecture then. Um, so a harvester node or host, as we sometimes call it, is running a, uh, a custom uh, Linux platform that is designed to run as a hypervisor. So that, that uh, low level operating system is designed to serve the purpose of being uh, a compute virtualization, network virtualization, and storage virtualization. We do that with KVM, KubeVirt, and Longhorn and the Linux kernel on that, on that uh, hardware. And then we can run virtual machines on top using uh, that uh, basically any x86 virtual machine can run in this uh, virtual space on top um, through hardware emulation. So of course these VMs could be Linux, these VMs could be Windows, uh, OS X if you wanted, BSD, any x86 operating system um, is, is, uh, can run in these virtual machines. And then we tie that into your networking through uh, using Multis and uh, uh, our network CNI to be able to bridge these virtual machines to various VLANs and other network systems in your environment. And Harvester, of course, is a cluster of, of hosts. So we've got two hosts here pictured, but Harvester is really clustering many hosts together uh, to provide a, uh, a shared compute platform uh, uh, across all of your uh, servers. So you can, you basically can uh, manage all of your servers as one pool of compute, one pool of resources that can be um, uh, allocated to virtual machines and eventually if you run Kubernetes allocated to containers um, through Kubernetes. And we'll talk a little bit about actually how you would image a whole fleet of servers in a second here. That's partly the, the demo today is showing you how you could basically take a rack full of servers and uh, image them all at once um, in, a, in a very uh, automated fashion. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, talking about deployment, deployment of Harvester, it's an ISO. It's a uh, it's an appliance based model. You get an ISO that's included that includes the operating system and everything to run a Harvester node. So you boot into that ISO and you image the box that is uh, that you're connected to, and and then Harvester will boot up onto that node, and then that node uh, joins the Harvester management um, system, and then you can administer it through the Harvester management console. And so, yeah, we should be able to bear, you know, we, we think about bare metal racks here that we want to image um, to, to create a cluster out of, as you can see. And with that, that's all the slide where we'll, uh, you know, subject you to, because of course we really want to spend time looking at the technology hands-on and most importantly, get your questions. So with that, I will pass along to my uh, colleague, Shang Yang, and uh, love to have you take it away, Shang, and, and tell us more about the technology hands-on. Right. Thank you, William. In fact, just as William mentioned before, Harvester is HCI solution, so we designed it to be installed in that way. That means Harvester is going to um, distribute as ISO, and you can install it into your bare metal nodes. And here, what you see is uh, when you start in the Harvester ISO and you start the installer. Okay, so. Well, you are seeing like standard grub and it's going to boot up into the Linux. We're going to take a few seconds. Oh, okay. So in the mean, oh, that's going. Yeah, so you might wondering what is running right now. So in fact, we are running, the, this is the Harvester. Let me see, let me change the screen size a little bit. Yeah, this is in fact Harvester uh, 0.2, which is our latest release back in uh, uh, in April. And this is running on top of a version of uh, K3 OS, which is the operation system um, built purposely for K3S. And in fact, we do have some plan for the operation system change in the near future for the, for the Harvester 0.3 release. I saw there's a question uh, from Garrett that's, uh, well, that's the K3S running, and this is, in fact, we are running and installing with K3S at this moment. 
So here, you can choose two model. One is to create a new harvest cluster or join an existing harvest cluster. And uh, non of course, for the first node, you're going to choose the new harvest clusters, and then you are going to choose which disk is going to be installed on. And let me see. Let me put this on the harvest node uh, demo 01. And then you can choose what's the NIC you want to use. Now, for example, some, excuse me, some machines may have multiple interfaces connected to um, different networks. And uh, for example, one can be one gigabits, another one can be like 10 gigabits, because in turn, you that's for the data. So you can choose that. And the IPv4 method is going to be the DHCP, and means that's going, of course, getting IP directly, like automatically from DHCP server. So then you need to choose a cluster token, and this is going to be serving as a token, or you can think about a password to identify any cluster, any nodes who want to join this cluster. Let me just put something here. I was the demo and the meetup. Yeah, just, just make sure that I remember this one. OK. And now you can also uh, configure your password to access the node. And this is going to be the password you are using once you have this uh, harvest installed and booted up. And uh, you are going to be, um, without this password, you cannot get in on that node. And we can show that in a moment. The proxy address, this one is connected to internet directly, so it doesn't need a proxy. As I said, you are going to skip here. And no remote harvest configuration at this moment. And now that's it. So that's on the Harvester Zero. To, if you want to just install a machine with Harvester, that's all the option you need. We might need to introduce. We might uh, need to introduce a little bit more options uh, regarding, for example, the hard drive partitions and some more uh, network configurations in the Zero Three. But uh, this is the, basically the uh, the main part that you need to configure a node for, which is in fact pretty straightforward. And then. We are going to like install Harvester. Well, this is going to take a while, so I'm not going to uh, uh, start on this one. But let's see. I was going to stop sharing for a brief moment and then switch to another. All right. So you can see this is Harvester is installing right now. But Shane, in fact, it's still the uh, console. Uh, yes. So can you see the dashboard now? Yep. No, we can. Yeah. So in fact, this uh, the harvester installer or like that console I just show you. In fact, itself is running on top of harvester, and this is this VM which harvester installer demo. And um, if you look at console, this is exactly what has been going on and uh, doing the installation. And you might think about this like a, a Russian DAO, which is one harvester on top of another harvester, but it's, we are also using this way to test harvester and. Uh, which is, works pretty well. And as you can see, let's start from the, this is the Harvester dashboard we are going to look at when, once you like have the Harvester installed. And on the top left, you will see you are going to have the IP address and the port, which is going to show up once you are finished installing Harvester. And then once you log in, you can see the dashboard, and which is very straightforward. What's the version right now? How many hosts I have? And the, the, the virtual machines, network, images, and volumes, how many CPU memory, and what's the storage size, and what is happening recently, and those stuff I can show you here. So, and the, the next page, you're going to see the host, which is going to be, uh, we have, this is the three host cluster. And as, uh, um, so, um, Harvester design, by design is a high, highly available. So in order to achieve the HUA, you have to have at least three nodes for to, to tolerate one node down. Because in fact, that is limited by the uh, fact that underneath is running a Kubernetes distro and with SCD and the three node. So as you might know that SCD on the three node actually set up can only tolerate like one node down. And that is how the HUA is implemented on the Kubernetes. So here we have three uh, Harvester nodes, which all installed using the method I showed you before. And one of them is starting the cluster, another two are like join those the same cluster. So once you click on the uh, Harvester node view, you can see that was the, some basic operation, uh, basic information regarding this Harvester node. 
like what's the IP is and what's the operation system. You can see this is custom versions of KSROS right now, and which going to do uh, for a change uh, in the next couple months. And uh, what's the creation time and what's the CPU memory and those. And you can also see another side what's the which machine is running on top of it. We will go into that more later. So in fact, just now, the next page we're going to see here is the virtual machine and the list then here they listed at which, uh, which machine is running correctly like currently on this uh, setup. So there are a few like open source lib ones and also uh, a harvest install demo which I showed you before and Ubuntu as one test container here. So in fact for console you can choose to either start the text-based console or like GUI, which is through the VNC, which I should be able to just log in this one. Or on the other side, you can also choose to using the Siri port, uh, sorry, using the Siri console. And this is, well, this is very helpful when you're trying to debug some like virtual machine related or kernel related issues. And you can also, I think, it's probably on the password waiting period at this moment. Yes. You can log in from here if you configure your kernel correctly. And also, as you might know, anything happens, um, like say in your kernel, we're going to be dumping the console, the C report console as well, which is make it easier for you to debug like some problems. So let me look it out here. And when you get into each VM, you can see that what the IP address is, and uh, there are two, there are few um, caveats here. So one is this IP address, in fact, is allocated by the Kubernetes, and if you want to have your own VLAN uh, provided IP, you need to define network later, which I'm going to show you later, and what's the image and what's the node is running on, and uh, also, uh, we, uh, we are able to find out what operation system kernel releases, but in that case, we need to install the guest agent, which is going to be an option when you start a VM. So on the volume side, you can see this uh, VM only has like one volume, which is like 10 gigabytes big. And on the network side, this VM is only on the management network, which is in fact powered by the Kubernetes overlay networking. I have put on an SS key here, but you can also put the SS key here, make it easy for you to uh, get access into the uh, VMs. And the cloud config is also for you to config for automation configuration for the network, as well as uh, set up the initial user for the logging purpose. And the event is whatever happens before. Uh, as you know that Kubernetes do have a tendency to recycle events. So it's not going to show everything here. We are going to like a demonstrate creating VM and see what events you can get later. The migration tab is related to the what's asked to successfully uh, light migrate the event, which uh, you might have heard of as, as well, well um, as uh, in well, well, it's called like vMotion and in KVM on Zen, it's normally called a line migration, which means you can move a virtual machine from one node to another node, not mostly for the maintenance purpose without the virtual machine has any downtime. So that is the one feature, additional feature we have implemented in the Harvester 0.2 in addition to what we have in 0.1. All right, so now let's create a uh, machine and see how it works. So let me see, I was going to create one with the lib 03. I think I have, yeah. So we can set, we can either use a VM template or set a, a CPU and memory by itself. And I will just put CPU and memory here. And uh, for the image, I'm going to use the uh, uh, leap, no cloud image, which is going to support cloud in it. And for the volume, I will just keep it here with the default 10 gigabyte on um, um, the, the volume size and for your main disk. On the net network, in fact, I can add more networks to here. So uh, in the back, I have already de defined a few other networks which are powered by the VLAN. And I'm going to add this virtual machine to the V991. And advanced options, and uh, we are going to select what's predefined. The user data, which is, is a part of feature, as I 
uh, highlight here is called a cloud config template. You can just directly apply this template and make it easier for you to configure your uh, virtual machines. And for this one, I'm going to just set the default password for this VM to be password. And for the network data, I can uh, using SUSE and Tunix, which is basically depends on what's the uh, interface name for your network configuration and how many NICs you have. And I don't need to enable the USB tablet here, which is majority of the op it's basically an option for um, like a GUI, like a graphics UI type of uh, setup. Okay, so let me just to create. If I'm going to take a few seconds, but the one thing I want to talk about in the Harvest 0 0.3 is we have implemented this uh, raw block device support, which has been like greatly accelerate the creation and the performance of a VM in on the harvester. So uh, in the pr in normal situation, when you have an uh, kubevert um, handling, for example, you know harvester is using kubevert. Uh, but when the Kubert or CDI, if you're familiar with them, they are handling the image like directly, like say, uh, whenever they have new image, they're going to copy the image from the source into the newly created of the, the persistent volume and then starting from there. But that also means that if you have, um, the, if you are reusing the same image for the different VMs, that same image need to be copied again and again and again, and create a lot of data redundancy on the node. So in the Harvester Zero Two, we have worked with the the Longhorn team to create a new mechanism called the backing image support, which means that Longhorn you can specify a VM image as the backing image for uh, for your Harvester. And then whatever you want to have to create a new VM, you can just ask for Longhorn to create a thin layer, copy on write layer on top of that, the backend image, and provide that to the VM, which greatly reduced the effort to copy the um, same data over and over again across the different volumes. That is a much more efficient and traditional way we do in the Harvest Zero One or uh, the default way was the um, Kubernetes CDI is doing. So now you can see that the VM lib03 is up. Um, if you are familiar with uh, like Kubernetes, you can see there's a bunch of uh, uh, events happening here. And it's pretty much uh, say that uh, it's pretty much instantaneously like you take a, this this volume is like a few hundred bit a uh, few hundred megabit size, but it takes in no time to copy the image because it's not really copy, it's just create a new image and the format, uh, not format it, just create a new image on top of the existing back image to reuse that part. So it's much faster compared to what we had before. And I can just go to the console to see this which machine, which is, well, let me see. Okay, so now it's finished up booting. I can just log in and see the password. And IPADR going to show you what the net network interface looks like. You can see that is zero is the one of the, in fact, uh, um, mass query interface by, uh, from the Kubernetes uh, IP. Another one is is one, which is directly connected to the VLAN uh, 91 in the, our, our data center. And you can see that it's got an IP of 172.16.91.43, which is the IP getting from the 91 subnet. So another thing I want to try with the, this, uh, uh, with the current demo is I want you to demonstrate the ability to live migrate one VM from one node to another node. So just make sure that this um, not much, uh, there's no much service interruption. I'm going to run some simple command here. Uh, well, ping probably is not going to be a big uh, a good choice because sometimes they're going to be a losing package when you do the migration and normally they're going to have a retry, but let's just put it here. And I'm going to close this console. I'm going to try to migrate this lib03, which is was on the hub02 to 
I will say harvest zero one, and let's try that. I was going to take a, a seconds to get it down, so um, I can answer some questions now. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of questions, Shane. Um, do you want me to to send to read some off to you, or do you want to go through them? Yeah, you the... can just uh, like uh, uh, read it up to me. Yeah. Okay. So we got one from Ralph, which is, does uh, Harvester support GPUs? Um, currently, we haven't added GPU support yet because we are still focusing on many. Uh, we consider the core functionality of the HCI. Like for the Zero Three, you are going to see a lot more options for you to do the VM measurement, uh, including creating uh, image from the VM and those those features we've been working on. But the GPU support is definitely on the roadmap, and we I think we can uh, get it uh, pretty soon after we uh, reach the GA. But it's just the, the team is really focusing on uh, getting the all the core functionality out at this moment. Gotcha. Uh, Mar uh, Marton says, uh, why is OpenSUSE the base and not SUSE micro OS? Yeah, so. Open source is, is not in fact the base, and uh, but we do have a lot of discussion internally. Say, are we going to use in Slim OS or so um, on those discussions? But in the end, it's tied to the more technical reasons. So I'm not to like talk too much about that. But I can talk a little bit more about the operating system we are currently working on, which is uh, based on. An internal project to make the Docker image as the like root disk for the operation system, and uh, um, we might able to just if you remember branch OS, we might able to call that uh, the new operating system at least for the open source version at branch OS v2. So that's uh, is the that is the one big change we're going to see on the Harvest Star three, and that OS is going to have ability to spin up. Uh, Kubernetes using either RKE or K3S, and also with uh, install the rancher just on, on along with it. And we are going to use that uh, to replace the current K3OS we are using. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, let me continue my demo. I can answer more questions later. Sure. Okay. So I think the Lyft 03 is up and has been like successful successfully migrated to the Harvest 01. Let's see what the console looks like. It's still running. Um, yeah, that is what the line migration about. It just makes sure that even okay, even that the light the, the the VM has been migrated from one node to another, and the content the the, pro, the process in that VM is still running. So that makes it much easier for you to do plan the maintenance for your infrastructure, which is the which is the one of the few one of the great things like virtualization can bring to the table for your operations for your DevOps. Okay, so let me continue. On the next page, you can see the volumes, which are um, basically using, um, and all of these volumes are powered by the Longhorn underneath. You can see some of them are CD-ROMs, and some of them either like rootes. You can always create your volume and uh, use it with the one of the VMs. In the upcoming Zero Three release, we're also adding hot plug volume feature, which means if the VM is even running, you can still add a volume to it without uh, bringing down time. It's just dynamically like hot plug your hard drive into your uh, system and get it recognized automatically. So that is also in the Zero Three upcoming Zero Three release. So image. This is the place that we have uh, improved a lot since the Zero One release. So now, if you just going to say you are going to create an image, let me in fact just find some image to create. Like for example, like I think K Zero S has some ISOs which is pretty small, which can easy to demo. Yeah. So for example, I just take this K Zero S MD sixty four ISO and Whenever you, if you um, the only thing you do to to create this image is basically just put the UI here. The name will be automatically populated for you, and then you create click create, and it's going to be there instantaneously because compared to what we have before, 
and we used to use a Minion um, server internally in Harvester to host those images and to make sure that whenever we want to do the copy and manage the image, the image will be copied, like downloaded to the Minion server first and then as, as uh, distributed to the other, to, to the volumes, uh, to the VMs that need the image. But now the, the image management is uh, completely covered by the, uh, the long form back image feature. So at this stage, when you do the image importing, it's in fact just register that image and the real download will going to happen once you start your first VM. But after that, uh, the, the, once the VM, once the ISO has been downloaded once, it doesn't need to be redownloaded again or for the older following VMs. So that's a huge improvement, as I mentioned on the Harvest Zero Two part. All right, so um, template. Yeah, so we have a building some template with the uh, for for easy use for the users and the, one of them, the first one is like ISO based image, and you can see that template is in fact very straightforward. It's just how many CPUs, memories you can also even put your image and the SSD in there, and for the ISO based image, we are going to uh, have a two disk attached to one to attach to the VM. One is called the CD ROM, of course. And this is going to be the place that we load the image. And another one is the root disk, which is going to the place that you, when you use an ISO, you normally want to like install the uh, whatever on ISO into the hard drive. And that is what things going to happen. So you can also define the network and the advanced option here. Everything is in the template. And you can create your own template and to accommodate more use cases. So backups. So this is also a new feature added in the uh, Harvester 0.2 release. And this feature allows you to backup the data of your VM, including your hard drive, into out of cluster S3 on FS endpoint. And that is the, uh, powered by the Longhorn's backup ability. So I can uh, start another backup, for example, for the lib 0.3. Just before that, let me write something to it. Okay, let me, I, I wrote this and let me see. I will going to just make another backup of this one. Just click take a backup here. And I will going to call that lib 3 back one. Okay, so the backup of this lib 3 back one has been initiated. So now if you look at the backup page, you should be able to see, well, there's a backup in progressing. It's going to take a while for the backup to be complete. It hasn't been ready to use yet. We can come back to that later. So on the network side, uh, Harvester currently support um, majority like two network model. One is the management network, which is powered by whatever uh, the underlying Kubernetes overlay networking framework. And in this case, it's a K3S with Fernando. And uh, the other one is uh, the VI networking, which we build from scratch. And we plug in those into, uh, you can potentially use in multiple network on the VM. And that is sent to the support uh, from the Motus. And that is uh, uh, what we have right now. So to create the network, you only, you can only create a VLAN networking at this moment, and you will need to give it network a name, and also you need to specify the VLAN ID, which you have programmed on your switch. So we currently have a two VLAN networking like added to this cluster, and but if you want to add another one, it's very straightforward. You can just, like I think I have 93 on this uh, cluster as well, so I just created. Yeah, in fact, in the background, they're still doing a lot of uh, things on the node to tag the VLAN and the correct setup of bridge or stuff, but that is all done automatically and in the background. And now for the, any virtual machine, you can join the VLAN 93 as well. So SS keys is you can um, just add your SS key to any of the VM, just paste the key here. The name will be automatically generated. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, like the example here. So uh, the next thing is the users. So currently, Harvester Online support a single user, which is going to be admin and with the password. So we do have a plan for um, uh, multi-tenancy and our back rule later, but that's going to be at least for the first phase, 
we are going to support it via via the ranch integration and that is going to be landed um, around 0 0.3. Cloud config template uh, I have talked about before, and you can see that we have the full password defined here, which you can uh, use to create any VMs. And we ha also have Ubuntu Tunix, we can um, like with a different nickname and there was SUSE Tunix. And those, the, those um, cloud config can plug in directly into your VMs. Okay. So, okay, so I think the lib03 backup has been down. Let me see if I can just uh, restore it to a new VM. I can say lib03 back VM. Let me see how that goes. It start restoring. And we should be able to like see a, a new site disk here just for the lib03 back VM and this still pending and doing this job due to the restore and we can check it back later. All right, any questions? Yeah, we got a few here, Shang. Um, one is, uh, I like this question actually, when is the, what is the time frame to 1.0 of Harvester from Jan? Yes, so the time frame for the 1.0 is uh, Q4 this year and we're tentatively targeting uh, before the uh, KubeCon North America, which is happens in October, but it's no guarantee we're going to hear that. There's a lot of work to be done, but that is our target. And uh, we're comfortable saying that uh, you should be able to see the GA version of the Harvester by the end of this year. Great. Yeah, thanks for that question, Jan. Glad, glad to see your, uh, your eagerness to use it. Uh, Nicholas asks, um, will it be possible to install with a Pixie or a Kickstart? Uh, yeah, so if you mention, if you, um, if what you mention is PXE boot, yes, the conversor supports PXE boot. In fact, you can just uh, take a look at it here. And this is the, the documentation side for the harvester. We do have installation using PXE boot installation, and this is how you should do it. And we also have tested on the Equinix Metal, which previously, named, uh, previously known as Packet. And that we have tested that, and others platform is all works very well. And in fact, Gareth, we are going to is going to show a demo on how to easily um, uh, provision Harvester um, bell metal nodes using uh, PXE and the Tinkle Bell, which is the infra which is a software from Equinix Metal to help you provision like a mass a mass amount of server at the same time. Okay, great. Uh, Near Lep uh, asks, using Harvester, I can can I can provision VMs on the Kubernetes cluster. Can I also provision a Kubernetes cluster in VMs provisioned by Harvester? Yes. So for that, you need to have a rancher installed on the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, sorry, in with the uh, uh, with uh, Harvester. So uh, previously, in fact, we have um, there's a lot of like more story to it. So currently, when you see the harvester here, in fact, it's also, uh, we're also running an embedded rancher there, but we are, don't encourage you to use that to provision the uh, Kubernetes cluster. And instead, we my outward advice is you should have start a new uh, rancher, like for example, using a creating a VM and using that rancher to manage this Kubernetes, manage, manage this harvester cluster to provisioning a new uh, Kubernetes clusters. Yeah, so that definitely can be done. And we are going to, um, there's a lot of design work and uh, change going on right now with the Zero Dot 3 with uh, the potential of a multi cluster multi harvester management feature inside the Rancher. And that is still in very early phase, but the, the over direction we are heading is you can use Rancher in the future, you can use the Rancher to manage harvest clusters. Yep. And yep. So definitely. on top of that. Yep. So definitely Rancher is going to be uh, a key part of uh, using Harvester to deploy Kubernetes. Um, and then there's a related question from Garrett. Um, can we attach to Rancher uh, for GitOps workflows? Yes. So that is also in in our design for the Zero Dot 3 and 1.0 to support that. Okay. I, somehow I was uh, might have looked out. <laughs> 
Uh, here's an interesting question related to our related uh, future demo. Is the ISO installer supporting iSCSI and iSCSI boot, i.e. diskless nodes? Sorry. Oh, so, sorry, give me a moment. Let me finish my part of demo. Yeah, you can see that this is the newly like restored VM. It still con contain the same um, host namespace because it was I created from there and all the information from hard drive has been preserved. But you can see that the VM's name is called the back VM. It's used uh, we like just restored from the um from the backup store. All right. Okay, so sorry, uh William, what's the what was the question? Oh, okay. Um and now I need to find it again. Um I don't have it. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, can the ISO installer also support iSCSI or iSCSI boot, i.e. diskless nodes? Sorry, I'm not very familiar with the iSCSI boot. Hmm. Okay, um, maybe that question we can uh, try to answer out of band then for you, sir. Um, let's move on to another one. Um, uh, we already answered that. How about supporting different CRIs such as CATA containers? Um, currently, we don't have time for that at this moment. And um, underneath, you know, the virtual machine um, framework we're using is the Kubert. And for now, it seems like it makes sense for us to stick to that. And another thing is the CATA container is more, um, I think if I understand correctly, the kind of container is more on starting the containers rather than the VMs. So the goal for the harvester is to provide a hyper-converged infrastructure software for the user to manage the VMs like efficiently. It's have some like interaction with VM at leaving the, the intersection between the VM and the containers, but we definitely need more to the VM as want to make that the VM management uh, experience at first class, at, at least that is the focus of the hardware side. Got it. Do we do we uh, want to move on to the rest of the demo before we? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let me stop my sharing. Yeah. So I'm um, now I'm going to hand over to Gareth to demo um, the feature we talked about, like using Tinkerbell plus PXE boot to massively install and image um, the um, biomental nodes in your data center. So as part of this demo, you know, uh, I you know plan to use uh, Tinkerbell, which is a project from Equinix Metal to sort of, you know, do bare metal management. Uh, it can do lots of fancy things, but I'm just going to focus on uh, provisioning Harvester. Uh, so, you know, we start off with a hardware spec in Tinkerbell. Uh, you know, and this is, you know, what tells Tinkerbell and the component called Boots how to serve DHCP and Pixie Boot. So in this particular case, I have two bare metal nodes in our data center. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is the MAC address uh, for the first node, which I'm going to call the seed node. And uh, that's where, you know, we're going to install Harvester first using Tinkerbell. And then I've written a Kubernetes operator, which goes on to this uh, harvester, you know, plus a uh, node, uh, you know, a cluster, and then harvester can add subsequent nodes itself. Uh, a few minor tweaks. Uh, so this, I'm running a custom version of Boots, which is the Pixie and DHCP server in the Tinkerbell stack. Uh, the only customization in that Boots is that I'm running a, you know, a custom installer which serves uh, Harvester Pixie. Uh, and, you know, apart from serving the Pixie boot, uh, you know, like the kernel and RAM disk images, I also serve the YAML file. And that YAML file basically, you know, like Sheng showed you earlier in the demo, where we fill out, you know, the elements in the UI to explain, you know, to highlight the URL and other components from where to sort of, you know, install. Uh, and configure harvester all that's passed as you know arguments in this create yaml so to get started uh, i will just push uh, this file uh, this hardware profile to tinkerbell uh, we can see 
this hardware profile. So now Tinkerbell is ready to serve Harvester's Pixie Boot to a bare metal node, which has this particular MAC address, and it'll assign this IP address to this node. Uh, so moving along, so this is my bare metal node. Uh, this is the MAC address that you know I have configured in Tinkerbell to be the first node of the cluster. So all I now need to do is power it on. And when it powers on, Tinkerbell will you know, listen for the broadcast request uh, and then serve a, you know, a next server reply uh, along with all the information that this node needs to perform a pixie boot. So this should take a few minutes because it's a real, you know, bare metal node uh, takes a while to boot up but you know i just wanted to showcase how easy it is to get started with harvester with something like thinkable running in your environment all right so um, while we're waiting for the pax boot to happen we can answer a few questions yeah, yeah sure, just a sure. second uh, i'll just let it trigger off so as you can see the node's been served the pixie from uh, my thinkable instance here and you know, this will now take maybe 20, 25 minutes for the full installation to be complete. And we can now look at the questions. Okay. All right, thanks for, yeah, yeah, we're trying to interleave all the questions and demo here. It's kind of like yeah. uh, you got the cake baking in the oven and, you know, can't <laughs> wait for the cake to finish baking. So we try to try to uh, keep it interesting while we're waiting. Um, so let's see here. Does Harvester have support for compressed images, uh, tarballs, zip? For instance, we have images in cold store match, cold storage format archived, and that we just unpack when using. I guess they mean virtual machine images. This is from Alex. Yeah. So currently, we don't support uh, the compressed image. We need to do some uh, pre-process about that. Is um, yeah. I would I was saying this. I'm not sure we have uh, if we are able to implement it by the GA, but if not, GA is going to be very shortly after because. We do know a lot of use cases and the users are using uh, compressed images and that's the stuff that means one of our target uh, like it, um, feature need to be implemented and the issue to be redressed. Yeah, they could in theory write a script that compresses it as a stream and then sends it to our API though, right, Sheng? You mean uncompress it? As a workaround. Yeah, or decompresses it and then, um, and then uploads it. Yeah, that definitely works. Okay. Um, here's a here's hopefully an easy one. Uh, snapshot capabilities. I'm assuming this means uh, VM snapshot capabilities. Yeah. So VM snapshot is going to be added by zero dot three, and at the time you can do the snapshot and then revert back to the previous snapshot within the cluster without uh, the uh, backup store, which is existing outside the cluster. And the backup store is going to be serving as the like uh, the like the real backup for your data, just in case that your whole class went down, you still have a copy of your data living in the backup cluster, which you can restore from. Nice, nice. Uh, another question uh, related to storage from Erez, what about data protection? What about dedupe, compressions, and then how about storage capabilities such as snapshots or SMB and NFS? Yeah, so um, the um, dedupe, uh, so, so basically the underlying storage is provided by the Longhorn, and the, the uh, Longhorn is designed to be a high performance, highly available storage and block storage, in fact. So, um, so currently, the dedupe and the compression is not supported. Uh, so, what's the third one? Sorry? Yeah, there's a, there's a few things there. Uh, how about snapshots, which you did mention we were going to yeah, support snapshot snapshots. Is, snapshot is supported and the backup is supported, which is going to be provide you the ability to backup a snapshot of your data, like VM volumes and stuff, and to the outside the cluster to keep the data safe. And what's the last one? SMB and NFS. Okay, so the river mining is supported right now in the uh, Longhorn, but it's a... Uh, mm, we're still making some tweaks on that. And uh, yeah, it's not exposed directly on the harvest right now. Got it, thanks, okay. Uh, Jacob asks, can you specify a MAC address on VM creation? Yes. Awesome. The, awesome, um, the, the option is there. Yeah, I think it's just in a UI field, uh, Jacob, when you look at that. 
um, in the Harvester UI. And then uh, Hayoto asks, we see that uh, VLAN networking is in the demo, which is great. Are there any plans to add support for virtualized network systems? Um, currently, no. It's probably not going to be there before the GA because we figure that the VLAN networking is the one, um, in fact, it's the from the uh, virtual machine operator perspective. That's this one like not really common in the Kubernetes, but pretty much fundamental to the VM operations. So VM, uh, the VLAN is the first one we support. Um, the, we are going to, we are considering adding more uh, CNIs to like more fit for the uh, virtual machine use cases in the future. Yeah, and thanks, Hiyoto. If you have any, if you want to suggest any specific types of virtualization we should look at, please do. Um, uh, I like this question from Martin. Um, uh, I think he's thinking about the, the, the big picture here because he asks, are the user integrations with Rancher, meaning uh, that uh, Harvester will get to use the auth endings, the auth uh, providers that come with Rancher, such as LDAP and Active Directory? Yes, but uh, um, based on the current design for, this is going to be implemented by the Zerados Rio by GA. And based on the current designs, that you, if you, um, you have to have the Rancher and in order to use LDAP and the RBAC, and the Rancher can all, can do that um, for the downstream harvest cluster. And the one Rancher manager is going to be able to manage multiple harvest clusters. And you can use that user and the login to the harvest cluster and see what you're supposed to see, which is, the, um, which is the how RBAC works. Yeah, so now that part is requires Rancher, but it's there. That's great. Yeah, so when you get when you add Rancher, you're going to get all that enterprise authentication that you have with Rancher to Harvester. Um, here's a great question from Roman: uh, Is it ready to be used in production? I love your enthusiasm, Roman. Yeah, unfortunately, no, not not at this stage, and we're still working towards that. As is, uh, when we hit J, uh, we are comfortable that using in, in in production. Yep, and then Ralph asks, um, will Harvester on top of an existing Rancher install be supported? And I think he might mean, can you add Rancher, sorry, har can you add Harvester to an existing Rancher for management? I think is what he's trying to ask. Yeah, so if you are, uh, if what you mean is that you want to use the, the existing Rancher or Kubernetes uh, cluster to provision VMs, unfortunately that is not supported. And also, I saw another question say, can you, uh, which kind of host OS we support? Um, in fact, we don't support any because Harvester is going to be shipped as ISO and it need to be installed in your node, just like how uh, Newtonics or VMware ESX works, right? So that makes the things much easier from the management perspective. Like we have the, the Harvester um, pro, uh, going to have the full control from the OS to the Kubernetes layer. So we can uh, very much ensure everything is compatible, everything is up to the very optimal state. And if you just like to swap out the OS or like just even swap out the whole um, Kubernetes distro underneath and put an only random Kubernetes distro, there's a lot of lot of unknown factors. We very hard for us to like operate like efficiently and you might get into a lot of like unknown troubles that's, I think that is why um, say that how the EXX or the Nunamics works is that you're not supposed to be really like putting on top of something else because the kernel, the OS, the Kubernetes, the Rancher we ship with, um, in fact, not Rancher, Rancher you need to install separately, but the Harvester we ship with is going to have the most, uh, we call to have well tested uh, combination to make sure we can have the pattern which can support them the best. Yeah, that's great. And and so Ralph, just um, yeah, as Cheng said, if your question is running Harvester on top of Rancher, Harvester doesn't run on top of Rancher. Uh, Harvester uh, integrates with a uh, existing Rancher for um, for multi-cluster management and for orchestrating Kubernetes inside Harvester. So um, just to clarify, in case your question was something different um, as well. Um, Let's look at uh, Tomas asks if uh, nested virtualization will be supported. In fact, it's already supported. Um, I think later I can show you. Remember at the starting of the demo, I put a harvester into installation. In fact, let me just check from back end. I think oh, we, there's yeah. even a blog somewhere about 
someone running it on GCP using nested virtualization. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, Gareth, can I switch back for a moment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just waiting for the node to boot up. The, the harvester installation is done on the first node. So as you can see, it'll take a few minutes for it to start harvester. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let yeah. me just switch switch to my demo and sure. I'm going to... This is a really complicated demo setup we got yeah. here. I'm very impressed. Yeah, so let's go back in. You can see that this VM harvesting install demo has been, uh, I think it's normally it's mostly up and running. And now it's what you see once you're install, a complete installation and reboot into the harvester. And for this one, you can, let me see, do I have a, no, I don't have that one. I need to press, F12, and then I can get you into this uh, harvester environment. In fact, I can do Kube control here. Oh, nothing here. This is running Kubernetes, right? So because harvester is built on top of Kubernetes, and you can see the old thing here. And of course, you can also see that we are showing a management URL, which is 92.37 here. And let's just go to there. Oh, uh, it's need to be HTTPS. So now we are getting into that nested harvester running one running on top of harvester. I can make it a little bit bigger and I will set some password as the first time logging. Okay, so as you can see, we have just one node and what we can do is well, this is going to be a stretch a little bit, but we can start a VM on top of this. Oh boy. Let me see that. Yeah. So that is nested visualization because that harvester is running inside this VM and we are going to start another VM on top of that. Let's just go with this like no cloud. Uh, what's this URL? Click to copy. Yeah, let me just create this image here. All right, so now I'm going to start another VM inside this. Leave zero one, two CPU, two chip memory, and advanced option. Okay, so this is only one network. I sh yeah, oh, I think that's all. Let's just create it. Okay, this is going to take uh, a second and we'll see if it can go, right? If it, this is basically nested, nested visualization uh, as being asked before. All right, wow. so any other questions? Well, we are waiting for this one to start. Yeah, another one is, do I need to run Kubernetes to install Harvester from NeurLab? Uh, you don't need to run Kubernetes. So Harvester itself is going to be, uh, you can think about Harvester is like a, a packaged solution. You just need to install the Harvester ISO, just any as any other ISO on your node. And you choose, you either want to create a new cluster or make the node add into your existing cluster. And then you start it up. You don't need to know about Kubernetes. Kubernetes is the implementation detail. Yeah, when you try to debug it, yeah, of course you need to know a little bit about that, but our purpose is Kubernetes and even Kubevert even long for all those are implementation details. So what we want to have is the well-packaged, hyper-converged solution experience, user, uh, software experience for the user. That is what we're talking for. So no, Kubernetes knowledge is not required. That's great. Um, here's a, another one, uh, Jason asks, asks, are there plans to implement a cluster API, or I think it's CAPI as the cool kids call it, um, implemented as a machine provider? Yes, so in fact, we are doing that for the Zero uh, 3 release. And once it's down and uh, uh, the rancher can interface with Harvester using CAPI and start provisioning uh, cluster on top of that. Great. Great, and then another sort of meta question here. Any plans to support containers in Harvester? Kind of a trick question, I think. 
there's uh, uh, no plan to support containers inside Harvester. So because uh, the Harvester is what we really want to make this experience focusing on, focusing on the VM and the container experience is going to be live inside the rancher. So if you care about containers experience and you can uh, spin up rancher on top of Harvester, importing the Harvester cluster and spin up Kubernetes cluster on top of that and also using a rancher to manage the container uh, to, and harvester side by side. So that is our target experience when you're talking about the containers, especially. Yeah, so, so Jacob, the answer is essentially yes, uh, but the means that we get to containers is through VMs. We use, a, we use VMs to build a Kubernetes cluster. That's our uh, preferred method for doing that. But then you can run Kubernetes clusters and containers in on top of that. Harvester stack. Um, Sorry for interruption. The the VM oh. just got it running. Cake is ready. Yeah, we always want to see it while it's hot out okay. of the oven. Okay, I can see from the serious console that probably more information there. You can see that this VM is start booting up and. Uh, I don't everything. see any kernel panics. It seems like it's working. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we won't see that. Okay. So here you go, Tomas. This is an uh, answer to your question by demonstration. Here's <laughs> nested virtualization on demand. Yeah, I think we're almost there. Now configuration, configure the network, which I suppose like they should get uh, IP address from BJ0. All right. That looks good. Yeah, it's at zero is up and with the I think it has internet access. Yes, right. All right. So that's really concludes my demo and thank thank you, uh, Gareth, for uh, allow me to take you more of your time. And I was okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Gareth, I was one um sure. I have one question for you, actually, right as you're switching over here. Um, yep. uh, actually, no, where did it go now? Uh, I'm sorry. There we go. Does Tinkerbell need IPMI access to work? So are you requiring IPMI at all? No, it just does a net boot. So, you know, it's sort of like a conditional net booter in, in the most simplified form, if I could say. Uh, you know, uh, it just listens for the MAC address and when it sees the MAC address pop up, it just serves it, you know, the conditional pixie boot or whatever, you know, you've asked it to do. Nice, uh, nice. Yeah. So okay. as you can see, uh, while, you know, sure, yeah, it was good that Sheng showed the nested virtualization because, you know, I didn't have to bore people uh, by showing the, <laughs> the install process. So my harvester is up. Uh, you know, and this is, you know, basically we just created it about 20 minutes ago using Tinkerbell. And I will log into this uh, instance. And, you know, we'll launch a few more nodes using uh, Tinkerbell again and Harvester now. So I'm just going to set the first password, the most secure one that I know. So I've written like a Kubernetes operator, which can now be deployed on the Harvester, uh, you know, seed node or Harvester cluster. And it can interact with Tinkerbell uh, or it can deploy Tinkerbell on this cluster as well. So now this cluster will now itself serve Pixie Boot for additional nodes. Uh, but before I do that, I, I am gonna enable the Rancher integration because, well, even though it's not supported, you only live once. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna just turn it on. I just want it just makes it easier for me to showcase, uh, you know, the UI experience for installing the Helm chart and creating the CRDs. So I've enabled that, and I'm also gonna set the server URL because my operator looks for the server URL to serve, uh, you know, the correct endpoint for, you know, the 
the join configuration for the subsequent nodes. So as you can see, I've turned on the Ranger integration. So now I can basically hop into. Uh, well, this Ranger is basically for the debugging purpose. It's not yep. supposed to be working for the production environment, just a word of warning. Yeah, exactly. And I just wanted to use it just to show the demo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no problem for you to demo it. Yeah. Because it's Rancher, we can do all the usual stuff with it. So I am going to start by creating a namespace for my operator. Obviously, I can do it from the Helm CLI. It's just easier to do it right from here. All right, and then I can install the app. I'll add chart repository of my Git repo, which contains the chart. I think the branch is main. Uh, let's click create. And we can basically just install that Helm chart right from here. So the default uh, in this Helm chart is to install another instance of Tinkerbell. It's a really stripped down version of Tinkerbell. I only install Boots, uh, the Tink server, and the database, and a CLI pod for debugging, but I run it on this K8 cluster, uh, you know, again, the default is to install it. If you already have Tinkerbell running in the Helm chart, you can see that I've written the instructions on how to, you know, obviously skip the install and just interface with your existing Tinkerbell instance. And that way, you know, it can just, so then the operator CRD can, you know, make the API calls to an existing Tinkerbell to, you know, create the hardware profiles in there so this should just take a few minutes uh, you know while it deploys uh, all the components uh, for, for this helm chart for, for this operator uh, all right while we wait for that let me just see if there are any other questions that I can maybe answer. <laughs> oh, mm. uh, the question is uh, the code for the Tinkerbell operator. Yeah, uh, it's open source. It's on GitHub. Uh, let me show it to you. While we wait. Uh, A GitHub handle is pretty easy to remember, I think. I broke the cloud. Well, I break more stuff than I can ever build, so it makes it easy. <laughs> yeah, so this is the operator, or well, the README may need a bit more <laughs> love if I say so myself, but you know, <laughs> I just write stuff assuming people will understand. But yeah, uh, it's got the operator, it's got the Helm chart, and uh, while we wait, uh, this is my fork of boots. Uh, in the harvester branch, you'll see I've written a new installer, which serves harvester pixie. And, and that's the only thing I've done to sort of, you know, make it easier for me to serve harvester pixie as part of this demo. And, and, and I hope that helps. Uh, so yeah, while we were doing that, my operators installed. I can now go back to the cluster operator. Uh, let me go to my namespace. As you can see, I can look at my deployments that I created. So everything's good to go. Uh, the object type I have is called register for registering the node. And <clears throat> All I now need is a CRD. So the CRD is a combination of a few things, uh, basically the Tinkerbell hardware profile, as well as the Harvester installation config. So it's an amal amalgamation of the two. So the idea is now I can define a CRD, which says this is the MAC address of my second node. This is the token to join the cluster, the interface, and the IP to serve. So all this is for 
Tinkerbell, and then obviously the token and the join configuration is served by this cluster. So as part of the bootstrapping, you know, uh, I will create a hardware, uh, you know, uh, ID object in Tinkerbell, and then you know, uh, within that hardware profile is a custom Pixie, you know, uh, a join configuration for for the new node, which is served by Harvester, and it's sort of you know, scoped just for this cluster. So the node comes and joins back. So I shall click create, and now I have a second node uh, with the MAC address that I have configured. Uh, all I now need to do is power it on, and we'll see in maybe a couple of minutes. Uh, you know, uh, Harvester will now serve the Pixie Boot, or Tinkerbell running within Harvester will now serve the Pixie Boot. And that Pixie Boot has all the information for the new node to join back to the seed node. So basically, you can configure all your CRDs and go through powering your nodes. And basically, Harvester will manage uh, with the help of Tinkerbell the or everything it needs to do to make that node join itself and expand the cluster. So, Gaurav, just to make sure I understand. So, if you had you're showing one server here, but if you had a whole rack of servers, let's say like you know, yep. 30 or 40 servers, you could just power them all on right now. And then they yeah, would just get their... create a CRD, uh, you know, that I created, the registration uh, object. Uh, just define this after the operator is defined and just go then power cycle those objects and then Harvester will do the rest using Tinkerbell to, you know, serve the Pixie boot, of course. But then, you know, say another 20 minutes, all your said nodes should be a part of this cluster. So wow! So you spent like twenty minutes setting up the system, your imaging system, and then in theory you could image a whole rack of servers in like five minutes. Is yeah, right? image them like, and make them part of the same harvester, you know, HCI installation as well. Wow! That just takes all the fun out of the data center trip, doesn't it? Yeah. So as you can see now, uh, if over here now this IP is the harvester uh, seed node IP. So it served the new Pixie Boot using uh, Think and Thinkable. And yeah, after that, it's just the easy part. <laughs> that is so uh, easy. Like, yeah. Wow. All right, the node's booting up, and we'll just shortly see that you know the join URL also comes from uh, the first harvester node itself. So the operator also serves an API endpoint. It listens at the node port service. Uh, and it serves an API endpoint, which serves the config, again, which is dynamically generated from the CRD object itself. So it's unique to, to each node that's going to join. So basically, you can configure you know, your nodes appropriately using the CRD itself, and they will get the right config. So as you can see, I'm serving a custom config URL, which is specific for this particular bare metal instance, and it's tied to the CRD. And also, you know, uh, I wrote it in a way that you can specify. Uh, so right now, it's downloading the ISO as well as the uh, RAM disk and kernel images from our releases. Uh, but uh, I made sure to write in, uh, you know, uh, ISO URL, uh, you know, field in the spec. So the idea is you can host these in an air gap environment, and the operator will basically install it from from your private, you know hosting endpoint. So again, it doesn't even need to go on to the internet. So hopefully it will work just fine as seamlessly in, in an air gap environment as well. So yeah, as you can see, the nodes uh, joining, uh, I suppose, another 10 minutes uh, before you know it goes through the full install process and it pops up here. So again, really, really easy, you know, uh, for example, by just leveraging just a simple glue operator and think of to do all the heavy lifting. That's great. Um, can we ask, can we answer a quick question here? Sure. Um, uh, Garrett asks, once Harvester is GA, can we replace each worker node with Harvester using a Kubernetes worker? I wonder how current Longhorn will migrate to the new environment. I'm actually reading this, and I'm not sure what the question is myself now. Uh, Garrett, is, are you asking perhaps if we can um, migrate the uh, worker nodes in a 
uh, a Kubernetes cluster and, and move them to a harvester, move them on, uh, on top of a harvester? Is that perhaps the question? Think, I think the question is coming, again, this is my understanding. Maybe the question is coming from the viewpoint that, let's say I start using 0 0.2, will I be able to upgrade the current 0 0.2 environment to GA one day? Yeah, so um, for the upgrade question, the answer is no. Is unfortunately the project is really like fast evolving right now, and uh, we do to uh, just as, as as I mentioned before, we do to a switch out for the base operation system. So uh, once we got the operating system like in place, the upgrade should be possible, but we cannot really guarantee that before the GA. And after GA, of course, upgrade is going to be fully supported. And regarding the original question, um, maybe for another angle is um, um, the asking is uh, how can like Longhorn scale to the new node join like after the main node? The answer is that's going to be happen automatically. Longhorn like even in the normal Kubernetes clusters, Longhorn is aware of new node join and leaving and going to adjust automatically and based on that. So that part is already done. Okay, Wieland, any other questions? Um, let's see here. Do we? Uh, Alex asks if the Harvester cluster is API compliant. Oh, is, it, is Harvester cluster API compliant in any way? And I think you kind of answered that. We're going to work on a cluster API support. Yeah, so cluster API is uh, you're going to operate it using Kubernetes standard API. And uh, you, all, all the operations you can do with Kubernetes, it goes through the CRCRDs. So that's a Kubernetes standard. And then Alex also asks, are there any plans for bare metal Kubernetes or K3S nodes? I guess supporting those bare metal Kubernetes nodes is the question. So for bare sorry. Um, is this question saying that can the harvester installed on top of the developmental Kubernetes node or? I'm, get, I'm thinking the question is can harvester manage bare metal Kubernetes nodes? Um, no, because the harvester, well, I would say the answer is it depends on what you mean. So harvester only manage the Kubernetes node that's within the harvester cluster. And that is what the harvester can operate and upgrade and doing the maintenance on. So in order for Harvester to manage any node, they know it has to be, to be running Harvester. It's not just say, you can think about the Harvester is the turnkey solution, but you cannot just run the single components. And so on top of that, right, there's a lot of work going to the integration and make it the one turnkey solution for like as HCI form. Yeah, so Alex, your question, there is, Kubernetes on bare metal with a harvester node. Uh, the hypervisor uh, has Kubernetes in it, so by by virtue there is Kubernetes on that bare metal. But that is not a platform for running user workloads. So if you wanted to use to run a user workload on Kubernetes, you would create a virtual machine set on top of that hypervisor and then run your containers and Kubernetes in the VMs. And that's where Rancher comes in to orchestrate all that. Another question is, um, are you foreseeing templating like Helm to deploy the VM? That's actually a great question from David. Yeah, in fact, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, the, the, we have some use cases like what you see as Tinkerbell here might be, and also like how would you install Rancher and other applications? Maybe we can do like just using Helm chart or some derivative form for Helm chart to support deploy like directly on the harvester, but we haven't uh, like really spent much time on thinking what's the best way to do there. And I was saying, and after GA, we are going to have more time and more um, um, user feedback come in and see and to help us to picture uh, that to design what's the exact experience we are going to look like and what's the, um, uh, what's the issues we are going to really address exactly. And that will be um, that will be the thing. I, I think there will be something which we want to consider, but there's no um, uh, effort and the research uh, um, on that part right now. Yeah, but that's a definitely interesting topic we want to talk about. Great. I think that's all the questions for now. So, Gaurav, uh, do you want to show us anything else at this point? 
Uh, no, just just gotta you know, unfortunately, wait <laughs> for the installation to complete. I think it's almost done, and then it reboots, and you know, okay, you cool. See actually, a load pop up here, <laughs> and it's actually, actually rebooted. I just, <laughs> I just got another question from Steven. When installing running Kubernetes and Harvester VMs, does Harvester provide a Kubernetes cloud controller manager with support for cluster auto scaling and dynamic volume provisioning? So I guess the question is, when oh. using Rancher to provision Kubernetes clusters in Harvester, yeah. is there going to be cluster auto scaling and dynamic volume provisioning? Um, dynamic volume provisioning is going to be there, but uh, cluster auto scaling is currently not in the scope. But on the other side, there's one other thing in the scope, which is the load balancer. And we are the, the cloud provider of the Harvester going to provide the building load balancer service to the development um, it's not, in fact, not to the development nodes, but to the VM on top of running on top of those uh, on top of the harvest cluster. So that's going to be there. Uh, we're definitely looking to adding more things into there. And but uh, in general, harvester should be as as a cloud provider should be as powerful as um, any other development cloud provider out there. That is going that is going to be our end goal. And Shang, maybe you should talk a little more about the Longhorns uh, CSI pass through because that is quite quite powerful, and people may not realize. Yeah. That so works. one thing um, when when talking about the storage driver and how do you do the dynamic volume provisioning inside guest cluster um, running on top of Harvester, and we are in fact going to provide you a similar way as uh, say how are you going to. Uh, provision and manage like EBS on top of on top of the EC2 instance because you are um, the thing is the driver we are going to provide is going to create a longhorn volume on the bare metal node rather than said have a longhorn like nested inside that Kubernetes cluster. It's going to talk to is the harvest cluster and create a longhorn volume and attach that volume to the VM and use that as a media, as, as the volume to your, uh, for your workload. In that case, your workload is going to have a direct access to the bare metal level performance rather than have nested and prolong the IO pass. So that is the uh, one thing we're still uh, we're working on for the 0 3 release. Uh, just to interrupt, Great. my second node is up. Uh, and it's popped in to Harvester as well. So basically about 40 minutes to go from zero to as many nodes as you want uh, uh, of, uh, of a Harvester cluster. Wow, that's awesome. Not an interruption at all, by the way. That's that's exactly why we're here to see this. That is that is cool. Do you have 100 nodes you can demo now, Gaurav, at your mm -hmm. disposal? Unfortunately, no, but you know, let me see if I can find someone's credit card to order some nodes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Um, so again, like this is all open source, um, as you mentioned, Gaurav, and it's, uh, I don't know, maybe we can put that in the YouTube video somewhere, or somehow provide people a link to it, but it's GitHub slash, I broke the cloud, right? And then maybe yeah. some repos there. Yep, uh, quite a few repos, but you know, I'm pretty sure there'll be an email going out for to all the attendees with the recording. I'll make sure that you know we can send out the 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 GitHub repo links in there just to make it easier for people to uh, to to find the two repos that I use for this particular demo, which is one my custom copy of Boots and also the operator itself. Okay, so uh, video, I believe you have like. A few other slides, or probably yeah. one slide you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, we can just jump over to that. All right, so yeah, so for more information on Harvester, we definitely encourage you to check out our website, harvesterhci.io, and also our GitHub, GitHub slash Harvester. And, yeah, uh, and also, um, yeah, and also we are pretty active in the Rancher user Slack Harvest channel. And uh, if you found any issues when trying with Harvester or have something, any feature proposed for Harvester and any feedback, in fact, just you can uh, either go to the Slack or file an issue on the githubs.com slash Harvester Harvester. We're looking at every issues and we're looking forward uh, to your feedback and hopefully uh, you enjoy Harvester as we do. 
Yeah, thanks, Shang. Um, I see that uh, Peter said that he got a VirtualBox harvester installed during the course of this talk. That's awesome. Glad to see that. Um, Garrett also suggested um, <clears throat> that we look into a layer three load balancer support like Pure LB, Pure LB, or we can support BGP and Anycast. Um, that's something we could definitely take a look into. J Jacob asks if there's a recording of the webinar. Yes, uh, that will uh, make it to our YouTube shortly, and there will be some follow-up emails if you've registered through uh, GoToWebinar. And um, and uh, Jason mentions that he's uh, playing with Flux 2 to manage this stuff in Harvester. That's pretty cool. I guess you're using the CRDs. Um, uh, of Harvester to uh, orchestrate those through Flux. That's great. Um, that's going to be similar to how our fleet integration will work too, where we'll use fleet to uh, program many, you know, dozens or hundreds of Harvester clusters in like an edge scenario. Um, okay, what else do we have here? Um, uh, Eris says good night to uh, to everyone. Uh, thanks, Eris. Good night to you as well. Thank you for joining us. And uh, what else do we have here? Um, I think there was one question is uh, RKE2 will be supported with Tinkerbell. Um, and in fact, uh, I, I will probably rephrase the question because uh, Tinkerbell is going to use um, install Harvester, but RKE2 will be RKE2 will be supported by Harvester, and it's going to be the default way of provision Kubernetes cluster on Harvester for the upcoming Rancher 2006 or 2006 plus, depends on the timeline. Yeah, that's a great one, too. Ryan says, uh, good stuff and thanks, and he's off to a dinner date. Okay, Ryan, enjoy your 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 dinner. That's awesome. Thank you for spending time with us. Um, Jacob says, that was great, uh, and uh, thank you all. And uh, I think that's I think that's actually it for the questions, unless I missed any, folks. Um, so, uh, Shang and... and um, Gaurav, if there's any other questions you think we want to cover. Um, uh, there's a quick question from Roger. He's asking if we have any plans to support ARM-based devices. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, so, um, you know, covers the beauty on top, uh, like uh, uh, Kubert, Longhorn, and other components. Uh, we know Longhorn has supported ARM. Uh, Kubert has, I think, pretty only very recently started to support ARM. So, we might able to look into the Harvester ARM support um, like afterwards, but currently the ARM support is not in the like GA target plan. And there's, well, basically because of that, a lot of other things we need to like focus and get down before we can um, make sure we can clear that Harvester is ready for the production. So ARM, we are going to need to be wait a little bit, but I do see a pathway to there in the future. Okay, appreciate all of the uh, the mentions about the demo and the kudos. Appreciate that, everyone. Thank you. Um, looks like people are starting to wrap up and sign off themselves. Um, so, Shang, uh, if it's all right with you, I think we can maybe wrap up uh, the meetup yeah. for today. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining, and this really been great pleasure to talk with you guys and answer your questions. Uh, feel free to try. Harvester and give us honest feedback, and we always appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Take care.